PC Sonic, the heart of your system. Brandy here from Kit Guru, and in this video, I'm going to be going over my final review of the NVIDIA Shield Pro. So, a couple of weeks ago now, I did do an unboxing of the Shield. Uh, I basically took it out of the box, went over all the different specifications and things, uh, and sort of gave you my first impressions. So, make sure to check out that video if you haven't already seen it. Uh, this is basically a follow up video. So, I've been using the NVIDIA Shield for a couple of weeks, and I just want to kind of go over my final thoughts and opinions uh, to let you all know what I think of it. So with the NVIDIA Shields, uh, the setup I found to be very, very straightforward. It comes with a power lead, so I plugged that in around the extension cord on the back of my TV. It is a decent length. Uh, you've also got the HDMI port. It doesn't come with a HDMI cable, but I imagine most of you probably have a HDMI cable lying around. Uh, and then also it has an Ethernet port as well, or you can connect via the Wi-Fi, uh, which is what I did. So the initial setup, you kind of turn it on and it does run on kind of Google's Android TV OS. Uh, so if you already have like an Android phone, if you use Google Chrome, if you've got like a Gmail account, it all kind of links into that, uh, which is what I have. So it's very, very easy to uh, sort of set it up. You turn it on, it spends a couple of minutes kind of booting up and then it gave me kind of like a pin code. So I kind of like logged in on my phone and then it basically took all of the settings and things uh, from my kind of Google account, even I think like the Wi-Fi as well, it sort of automatically set it all up in a few minutes and it was ready to go, which for me I think is really great. It fits into the existing ecosystem that I have. Uh, it didn't take long to set up. <laughs> One of the things I really hate about new devices uh, or new kind of tech really, like when you get a new phone, you have to spend ages kind of making sure you've got all the apps and things. It's obviously a lot more straightforward now than it used to be, um, but it's something that I definitely never used to like kind of the initial setup and things. But with the um, video shield, I found it so, so easy to do. Um, and then also, it did have a little bit of a firmware update as well. So it turned on and then you kind of get a notification that needs a firmware update. But that didn't even really take that long either. I think it probably depends on what your internet's like, but it downloaded it, installed it, and then it was basically ready to go. And I got straight forward into using it. With the NVIDIA Shield turned on, it does light up a really nice kind of like subtle green colour. Uh, that kind of green tick at the front there that I couldn't really tell when it was turned off. But yeah, it does definitely light up. If you're not really a fan though, there is an option to kind of change that in the settings menu. Uh, so you can kind of turn it down or turn it off. Also, the remote does actually light up. So when it's sat down, the lights kind of automatically turn off. But if you kind of pick it up to use it, uh, the lights do light up quite a nice sort of subtle uh, white colour. So they're not too blinding. If if you're going to look at it in a dark room but they do definitely help you to sort of navigate the buttons which I do definitely like. The shield itself while using it I found to be pretty quiet. Uh, there is some options in the menu to kind of change if you want it to be cool or you want it to be quiet. I personally have been using it in the cool mode but I didn't find it really made any noise at all uh, and obviously if you're going to be doing anything on it where you're going to be using a um, like a pair of headphones or if you're going to be using it through some speakers on your TV, you're definitely not going to notice uh, any sound, I would say, coming out of the shield itself. Uh, when it comes to actually kind of using uh, it, I found it to be really, really smooth as well. Uh, so if you're used to something like a TiVo box, I don't think whether it's just me, but the one that I've got at home is extremely slow when kind of scrolling through menus. The Shield is incredibly fast and responsive. I haven't really noticed, to be honest, it hasn't really hesitated once. Even when you whiz right through the menus, it just doesn't really lag behind at all. Uh, so I did find it to be very, very impressive. Obviously, the kind of new processor and things that NVIDIA used in this means that it's very very fast and very responsive so it still so, sort of stops that frustrating feeling you can get sometimes when it does um, certain kind of TV boxes lag behind. On the remote, it does have plenty of different buttons for sort of undertaking different tasks. So if you press kind of the uh, double press the circle button, for example, it will bring up any of your kind of recent apps and you can kind of close those down if you wanted to. You've also got a back button on there as well. You've got the options to kind of change the volume on the TV. This is actually my computer monitor, so I haven't got it set up because obviously it doesn't have kind of like IR capability. Uh, but I did try it out with the Samsung TV and it pretty much works straight 
straight away. You go into the settings, uh, it kind of detects what TV you've got and the first code it tried worked for me. Uh, so that was very, very easy and straightforward to set up. In fact, the only issue I have with the remote is actually that giant Netflix button at the bottom because if you press it, it interrupts no matter what you're doing at the current time. Uh, and I actually found that it was quite easy to accidentally press as well. Uh, so I did actually a couple of times accidentally open Netflix when I was just kind of reaching for the remote to kind of change the volume or something, which I did find to be pretty frustrating. Uh, one thing as well with the Netflix button, it isn't actually reprogrammable either. I thought maybe it would be. Um, you actually, I think the only way to do it is to use a third, a third party app to kind of reprogram it. I'm pretty annoyed that Nvidia haven't kind of built that into the shield. Maybe it's something they can probably add in a future update, but I couldn't find anywhere to kind of change it within the settings. If you want a little bit more functionality on the Shield, there is also a Shield TV app. Uh, you download it on your phone. I've got an Android phone and it works perfectly fine. It's very easy to find on the Play Store. And not only does it have kind of like a built-in remote for it, you can also kind of open different apps. You can open different games for it. The remote will also turn into a trackpad. So if you want, you can see that I've now got a cursor on the screen and it is extremely responsive. It is, it is pretty much real time, which is, which is really amazing. Like as soon as I move it on my screen, it moves across on my monitor, which I really, really do quite like. And you've also got the option to use a swipe pad as well. So you can use this just to kind of scroll. Um, I haven't quite got the hang of that. I think it kind of detects where your finger is on the screen, uh, but it's, it's definitely a, a little bit odd that one. Um, but I, I, I didn't really get the hang of that, but it does have a lot of functionality and you've also got a keyboard as well. So if you wanna type stuff a little bit more quickly, you can type it on your phone, you can adjust the volume, you can also talk to kind of the Google Assistant and things. And the, I had no real problems with the app actually. I think it might have had a recent update, which is probably why it is actually so good. Uh, but I did actually find myself using that a couple of times because it has a really good sort of amount of functionality and I think it pairs really well with the remote. The overall menu layout of the NVIDIA Shield, I found pretty straightforward to navigate. You can see that you've got kind of apps and then it gives you kind of suggestions of things to do. And you've also got like NVIDIA games and like Netflix and things and also YouTube down the bottom. Uh, I found it a pretty easy menu to navigate and get to where I wanted to. Uh, you can also customize this as well. You can customize what kind of apps and things you actually have on the home screen. However, I did find sort of maybe the easiest way to get around and do things quickly is actually using the Google assistant. Um, normally with these kind of uh, like Amazon Alexa and things they can be a little bit temperamental but on the Nvidia Shield I found it to be reasonably good if you ask it to do pretty basic tasks. Uh, I can ask it what the weather is like or if you want to ask it to kind of open a particular app. One of my favourite things to do is tell it to open Spotify and play music. Open Spotify and play music. Playing some music on Spotify. So I will probably have to mute that uh, to stop us getting demonetized on YouTube, uh, but it does actually work quite well. Uh, some things it will kind of do a double step and sometimes you have to tell it open this and then kind of tell it again what you want it to do. Uh, but in general, I found it to be pretty good. It tends to recognize what you're trying to say quite easily. And also being a Google Assistant, it will kind of work if you have any kind of smart home stuff as well. So if you've got those like smart uh, kind of hue bulbs or if you've got kind of a smart thermostat, it does kind of link in with kind of the home ecosystem and things that you have. I think it will also work with kind of like your Amazon Alexa and things as well. Uh, so it's not particularly picky with what it works with and I did find that it has quite a lot of cool tasks and things you can do with just kind of telling it what you want to do with your voice, which sometimes does save you a lot of effort searching through the menus. Uh, one thing I find it won't probably do though is like if you want to open like a particular setting or something, it doesn't seem to like that. It tends to be just if you want to open an app or things. Uh, but and yeah, I did actually quite like the Google Assistant and I found it surprisingly not frustrating. Uh, in general, the NVIDIA Shield experience that I've had was pretty bug free. Um, I think probably the only issue I had is that the Google Assistant became unresponsive for about 30 seconds. I can't remember what it was I asked it to do, but it kind of like crashed. Uh, and I kind of left it for a bit and then it came back again. Um, but yeah, that was only the real kind of problem that I had with it. In general, it's a very smooth, very kind of pleasant experience.
There are quite a few features on the Nvidia Shield TV that certainly make it stand out. Uh, one of them is the Dolby Atmos and Dolby kind of uh, vision. Unfortunately though, I don't have a compatible TV or sound system, so I couldn't really try those out. Uh, it's something that I definitely want to invest in in the future though, because that is gonna create a really good experience for kind of like media streaming and things. One of the things I could try out though was the AI upscaling, and it was something that I was really excited to try out because I was like, hmm, is this gonna be another case of like, mm, it, it sounds good on paper, but doesn't actually do anything in real life. Uh, me personally, I did actually find it to be pretty good. It does definitely make a difference. I'm gonna attempt to demonstrate it on one of Leo's videos. So Kit Guru, we normally do all our videos in 4K, but I have changed my kind of YouTube settings that is actually playing in 1080p on my 4K monitor. Uh, in Within the settings, uh, you go down to AI upscaling and you can tweak it. So I've got AI enhanced activated. Uh, so it is currently doing something and I've got it set to high as well. Uh, and then I can actually enable the demo mode. Uh, so what this means is that the screen will kind of turn into like half and half. Uh, when I, yeah, there we go. So on the left hand side, we've got the basic and on the right hand side, you've got like the AI enhanced side. Uh, I personally did find it does definitely make a difference. Uh, with some media, it tends to look better than others uh, because it does can make the detail maybe look a little bit too harsh in certain cases, but you do have the option to tweak it between kind of like low, medium and high. I've got it on the high settings so that hopefully you can see a reasonably dramatic difference between the two kind of sides on the screen. With certain things, it is definitely more noticeable noticeable than others. Um, after a while of using it though, I did find that I didn't really notice it was on, but I guess that's probably a good thing about it. Uh, but I think it's a great feature really, because 4K TVs are becoming much more affordable now. It used to be something that you would kind of aspire to have and they cost thousands of pounds. Uh, now you can pick up a 4K TV for like 300 quid. Uh, so it's something that I think is really quite good and it's something that can actually benefit the mainstream because a lot of media is 1080p. When you watch TV, uh, some kind of streaming things, like a lot of people on YouTube as well, a lot of older YouTube videos are definitely not gonna be in 4K. Uh, so if you are using a 4K, it can definitely kind of enhance the experience on that. And I do think it is actually quite a worthwhile feature that I really kind of enjoyed trying out. It works, seems to work perfectly fine with kind of YouTube and Plex and things. I'm hoping that you can definitely see the difference here. Um, and it is, yeah, I did actually really quite enjoy using it. Another feature that the NVIDIA Shield TV has is that it does have a built-in Chromecast as well. Uh, so that is something that obviously you could buy separately, but I think it's really nice that it's kind of included within this. So what it means is that if you've got a kind of video opened on your phone and you're like, oh, this would definitely look much better if I watched it on my TV, you can then kind of Chromecast it to your TV. You can Chromecast lots of different things. There's quite a few apps that will kind of work with the Google Chromecast now. So that is definitely a feature I quite like and it does add uh, those rather nice screen savers and things when the NVIDIA Shield is left idle. Also, it does have the option to watch live TV. Uh, so this was something I kind of found out by accident. Um, but if you basically have an aerial and then you have like something like a HD home run tuner attached to it, uh, which we actually have in our household, um, you it basically kind of appears as an option to add it. Uh, so you do have actually got, you have actually got like a live um, TV channels app I can't remember the name of it right now, but I will put it in some B-roll on the screen when I find it. And that actually seems like a pretty good app. So that will kind of tune and it'll find channels. And it means that you can watch live TV from your Nvidia Shield. Uh, so that is really quite a nice feature for those of you that are gonna be using it as kind of a complete solution to all of your kind of media, TV and kind of gaming uh, setup. So the NVIDIA Shield TV has basically everything you could want media-wise, but what makes an NVIDIA product for me is all of the extra gaming features as well. So with those two USB ports, this is the pro version, you can plug in a mouse, you can plug in a keyboard, you can plug in a, a games controller, and you've also got the options to connect wirelessly as well over Bluetooth, so you can con connect with the NVIDIA Shield controller, connect with kind of a compatible PS4 or Xbox One controller as well. Uh, anything you want sort of over Bluetooth. And that makes it a really great kind of like uh, console device for like streaming or gaming on. Uh, and if you open the NVIDIA kind of um, games app, You've got on the left hand side here, you've got like recently played, my library, you've got new releases, most popular, and you've got free with Shield. So on GeForce Now, uh, with the Shield, you actually get a few games kind of included in this. Uh, they're not 
particularly new games, but they're all pretty popular of their time. Uh, so you've got Tomb Raider, you've got Sonic All-Stars Racing, I've actually tried that out, it's pretty good. Uh, you've got Spec Ops, you've also got Batman Arkham City, you've got um, XCOM Declassified, uh, there is uh, Bioshock, Lego, sorry I'm struggling to see on Lego Movie, uh, Borderlands, that is an awesome game, uh, obviously the new one's come out now, uh, Street Fighter, you've got Batman, uh, Batman 2 something, superheroes, uh, Saints Row, Sniper Elite, uh, Batman, Arkham Origins, Sleeping Dogs, uh, Does, Does X, do, I, don't, I don't know how to pronounce that, uh, Thief, uh, Mini Ninjas, Lego Harry Potter, and lag, le, more Lego Harry Potter. Um, so there is quite a few different games that actually come free with the shield. And of course, if you have got sort of like uh, GeForce Now, it is in beta at the moment. Um, and I did try out GeForce Now. The one issue I have with it though is that the queue times seem to be really, really long. I think it is an awesome feature. I'm sure that Nvidia are gonna be improving it all the time because like I say, it's in uh, beta. Um, but I tried to, I basically queued up to play this like Sonic um, racing game and I was in the queue for about 20 to 30 minutes. It was at like six o'clock in the evening, but you basically kind of had to like open the game up and leave it there and then kind of, I kind of went off and did something else. And then when I heard the noise of the game starting, I like came back in and, and started playing it. Um, but that is something that I did find slightly frustrating. It might be um, better to join maybe at a less popular time of day. But if you're kind of joining, trying to play a game at peak hours, I did find there was quite a long queue time for that. Um, also with GeForce Now, it does rely on the fact that you have good internet. Um, I find it to probably be... Um, I know like Google, is it Stadia? I, I'm not sure how you say it. Um, that seems to be, I don't know, that's had a few teething problems. GeForce Now seems to be, actually be pretty smooth. If you've got a stable internet connection, it's very, very, very playable. Um, if you're someone that lives in an area that doesn't have great internet, you're definitely probably not gonna have a good time. Uh, but if you're fortunate enough to have a good internet connection, I think it is a really, really great feature. And with GeForce Now, if you want to use the Nvidia Shield as like your main console device and you have got a in good internet connection, you can buy games on it. Um, I think you can also use what you've got in your existing Steam library as well. I'm not 100% sure on that one, but I, I think I think you can. Um, also with the Nvidia Shield, um, you get the option to um, game stream. So if you have a PC such as I do, a rather good gaming PC, uh, you can stream games over your own network. So that works the same as kind of like um, Steam streaming, uh, Steam share, Steam screen share. I can't remember the name of it, but it works basically the same as that. Uh, so you can have your PC in another room. If you've got a good connection between the Shield and your PC, you can play pretty much anything your PC can run on the Nvidia Shield. So for me, that seems really, really great. Um, if you've possibly got your PC in your bedroom, but then you have like friends around or something and you wanna play a game on your TV, you don't wanna bring the, t the PC down out of your room and plug it into your TV. You don't wanna move it around. It doesn't live in your living room. You've got the Nvidia Shield, which kind of makes the connection between the two. And I found that really, really good. It was very easy to set up. You go into GeForce Experience, you kind of log in there. The Shield appears on there if it's on the same network and then you basically select what game you want to play and it appears on the Nvidia Shield and then once you've done that once as far as I know it kind of stays on here yeah so it's now kind of detected it can see my PC on that and if I click on that it would kind of open um, Formula 1 2019 and start playing it because I've added it on my GeForce experience on my PC um, you can also see with Nvidia games that you have the option to play Android games. Um, so stuff that you can find on like the Google Play Store, you can play them on the Nvidia Shield and I, they just kind of install onto the Nvidia Shield. And the processor that it's got in there is basically powerful enough to play most of them really well. Um, I have tried a few out. The less demanding ones run really, really well and really quite perfectly actually and had a good time. You can act up a controller. Most of them do require a controller. A couple of them don't. You can actually play with the, um, the remote. But if you connect up a controller, something like Asphalt 8, I found didn't work very well though. Um, the this this like jump drive game worked great. Um, the Red Bull game worked great. 
but unfortunately Asphalt 8 I think was a little bit too demanding for the Shield. Uh, I think it is quite demanding for most mobile phones as well. Um, something about it, it just meant it was kind of choppy, it kind of um, lagged about. I didn't really enjoy playing that. Um, so I think maybe it's possibly not powerful for some of the Android games. Uh, but in general, I think it's going to be perfectly fine for pretty much anything. Especially like GeForce Now and GeForce, um, uh, like... Nvidia stream uh, where you can stream from your PC is really really cool and there is quite a lot of different kind of Android games to choose between as well um, I don't think you get everything you can get on the Play Store but anything that's on the Android TV Play Store you have access to on this um, and I think the overall kind of gaming features of the Shield are what really really makes it. If you wanted to use the Nvidia Shield as an emulator as well, you can also do that. There are apps on the Play Store that you simply download onto the Shield. You put the kind of ROM that you want to run on a USB stick and you can play them on the Shield. This isn't something that I've actually tried out because personally, um, trying to emulate games is something I haven't done for like five years or like four it's something I tried when I first like got my PC um, and it's something that I am not really aware of where to even get ROMs from or any of that stuff now so I, I didn't really try it but it is a feature the Nvidia Shield has if you want to do that obviously you do need the Pro because you need the USB slot to do it um, but I think that is obviously quite a cool feature and obviously being the Pro is slightly more kind of powerful the newer Nvidia Shields um, I think it's obviously got that little bit more of a performance boost for kind of better emulation over the previous version. So overall what do I think of the Nvidia Shield TV Pro? For me I absolutely love it. Um, for someone that hasn't really used this sort of device before, I mean I've used other people's but I've never really owned something like this, you'd probably have to fight it off me now um, because I just yeah I really really like it. It's got such great kind of compatibility. You've got 4K, you've got HDR, you've got like the AI upscaling, you've also got Dolby Atmos and Dolby Vision. It really makes me want to upgrade my TV to be honest and upgrade my sound system because it's going to be great like if you want to binge watch movies, if you want to watch YouTube etc like watch Plex uh, movies on Plex, watch TV shows, whatever you want to do with it it just it looks great. Um, it has it isn't perfect in some aspects. I don't like the Netflix button and I also think the Google Assistant can be a little bit kind of temperamental. It does what you want it to do most of the time um, but it's not really perfect. Uh, but in general I think it's awesome. It is very quite expensive for a kind of home media streaming device. I mean like £200 is definitely not cheap compared to what you can get out there. But if you're going to make the most of the extra gaming features, so it has got those two USB ports, so you can plug in a mouse, you can plug in a keyboard, you can plug in a controller, you can basically play PC games on it, you can uh, stream from GeForce Now, you can play Android games on it. I think the gaming features are really great. Plus, it is super, super quick. It is really, really responsive. It's very intuitive and easy to use. It's really simple to pick up. You've got lots of apps to choose between on kind of the Google Play Store. And then, yeah, I basically just it's really, really love it. Um, I would like to know what you guys think of it. This is my first kind of review of this kind. Um, I don't really get anything like this to review very often. I've never reviewed like a console or a TV media streaming device or anything like that. But I think, yeah, for me, the Nvidia Shield TV Pro is worth it. I think if you're considering it, you like the look of the features, you've got kind of like 200 pounds, you're like, mm, I think I'd quite like to upgrade like my Fire Stick, for example. I really like the look of those gaming features. And I think, yeah, go for it. I mean, it's Black Friday soon. So to look out for those Black Friday offers. Uh, but for me, I think the Nvidia Shield TV Pro is well worth having. If you've got any questions that you want to know, please make sure to leave a comment. I will do my best to reply. I'm probably sure I haven't covered absolutely everything in this video that people might want to know. Uh, but make sure you leave a comment below. If you like the video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. Um, also, if you like Kickaroo, please remember to hit that subscribe button as well. Also press the little bell icon uh, and you'll get a notification every time a new video video goes live.